So hello guys, how are you? And welcome to a bonus or a special live. This is a live, of course, that is not scheduled. It was not a part of our normal um, content plan. Um, as you guys know, we have another uh, special video coming up uh, next week. So the goal is for me to do at least one uh, training per week. Um, however, I got a request and it was something that I actually have been wanting to do for a while. And it just so happened that I had everything that I needed um, to uh, basically to shoot this content. And this is really not a talk about planners or journals. Um, this is actually a talk about publishing nonfiction um, work. And I have a lot of leaders and experts and guys, I'm sorry for the noise. There is a conference room next door in there. It's a large party. Um, and so I have had the awesome privilege um, to be a published author of books and workbooks. And uh, for about, I would say, the past four or five years minimum, um, I've spent my time doing speaking engagements, uh, workshops, conferences. And um, and so I know I have a lot of experts here um, who are part of the channel, whether you are an expert in uh, the marketplace, whether you're an expert in ministry and, and in the religious space, uh, maybe you're an expert um, in your business and you have business knowledge and you desire to share that to the world. And so um, today I want to talk about just some strategies and secrets um, to really putting yourself out there as a personal brand, as a speaker, an author, a coach, um, and what I learned in my process of being an author. Um, and so I have several books. I have books. I have workbooks. I have um, online courses. I have classes, trainings, eBooks. I have written a lot of content. Um, but the thing about it is that as I teach you guys, it's really not about creating things. You want to create things that sell, right? And so I also want to talk about how I've been able to link becoming an author to adding uh, a passive income stream that has made me, in my opinion, and in my life, it's made me pretty successful. Um, and it really doesn't matter, again, like, you know, you being a celebrity or whatever. It is really about you finding your tribe and feeding them with the knowledge that that they desire um, and so I'm gonna start off with I'm showing you guys my book these are just some of the books that I have but these are the books that are published and uh, people have bought um, from all over the world which I'm really excited about so I'm gonna go in order um, of when I publish them and then we're gonna talk about again what I learned in each one okay because I learned a lot okay um, so the first thing is that um, I, I love to write that is a, a huge, I love to produce content. And I, I learned that ever since 2012, when I first started online ministry and I was writing Bible studies and I was just writing, 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 and I really fell in love with it. And eventually I began to gain some actual tangible experience um, where, you know, I became a leader and um, I was able to begin to have this teaching gift that I was able to basically teach people how to do the things that I've done. And so with that, I have produced books according to that. And so the first secret I want to share before I dive into these books is that when it comes to writing nonfiction content, you want to really make sure that you're writing for someone's needs, right? And not for your greed. And okay. And what that means is that we don't just write books because we want to sell books. Right. But I begin to think about the fact that when I went to travel to do speaking engagements and workshops and all that kind of stuff, I needed product. I needed a product to sell. And I needed the product to link to my expertise, right? So I have expertise in ministry. Um, I do a lot of Bible study teaching. I do um, a lot of teaching on leadership. And of course, a lot of teaching on business. So I needed to have books that could really, books or workbooks that could serve to those specific needs, okay? So the very first book I wrote was actually... This was not even, I wasn't even trying to write a book, okay? This was not even the original cover. The original layout I did at Staples. And then eventually I decided to repackage it as a book. And this was actually my first book that I ever wrote. And it's called Faith in Glass Slippers. And it actually is my favorite. Out of all the books I've ever written, this is my favorite. It is a faith-based book. I have one faith-based book, one faith-based leadership book, and then I have um, several business books. But Faith in Glass Slippers was the very first book I ever wrote. This was back, I want to, this is 2016. 
yeah, 2016 is when this one came out. So not that long ago, but 2016, this is a much smaller book. And I'm seeing you guys tuning. Hey, Kendall and Claire. Hey, the Pink Tub. Hey, from Pain to Purpose. Hey, guys. Let me just shout you guys out real quick. Hey there. Hey, Portia. Hey, 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 guys. Hello, guys. Hello, 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 hello. So glad to have you guys here. Um, so this is the very first book that I wrote. This book is, I think, like maybe. 39, 39 pages, it's 39 pages. And um, the first thing, I, now the first one I gave you guys was that we don't write for grief, we write for need, right? That's the first thing we said. And so what that means is that you're writing for someone's need, right? To help them, And because, because again, we're talking about nonfiction books. So these are books that are self-help, inspirational, you know, business, you know, some kind of how-to, right? And so um, it's important that when we are printing, right? This is called print school. So you're learning all about things that we're going to print and books are one of them. So if you're going to be writing a book that is going to highlight your expertise, share your knowledge, write to the need. And so this was, again, the first faith based one. The rules that I learned in, in writing this book, um, the first thing I learned writing this book was that it's not about how long it is. This is a huge misconception when it comes to the nonfiction world, right? Length is not as powerful as the content, okay? Um, a lot of times we feel like the book has to be long in order for it to be good. This book has been, I cannot tell you the number of women that have contacted me about this book, Christian women, because again, I'm a Christian, so I write you know, that kind of faith based with this book specifically. And I cannot tell you how many women have inboxed me, emailed me and say, Genesis, this is the book that I read every single time I'm going through something that I did not deserve, something, a storm. And that's what it was written for. It was written for women who were going through a Cinderella type of experience where they were facing um, a storm or a trial that they did not ask for. And it gives you the principles to live like Cinderella. And it's the really the fact was that I wrote what I knew I wanted to write. And then that was it. I didn't write any longer. It ended up being 39 pages. This is a six by nine book. Print off of it. I did use Kindle Direct for all of these books. These all these books are printed through Kindle Direct through Amazon. This book does it's not long, 39 pages. It's one of my best sellers. I mean, as in like out of courses, t-shirts, workbooks, this is the book. And so it shows you how it's not always about how long it is. It's about the power of the content. Um, the other thing I learned about this book um, was that when you write nonfiction, especially when you're trying to teach something, um, you don't write. You need, to, you need to make sure that when you're writing, especially getting a nonfiction book, that you write to the heart of the person. Right. Whether you're teaching a concept, whether you're teaching something faith based, non faith based, whatever it may be, you write to the heart. OK. And so when I wrote this book, I acted as if the person was right across from me and I wanted to share with them what I wanted to share with them. And so I didn't write like a stale way, like it was an essay paper. I wrote like I was writing to their hearts. And that's exactly what happened with this book. So this is Faith in Glass Slippers. Again, it's 39 pages, not long, um, but it's one of the best sellers. I did make sure um, that it was also available as an e-download, too. So when you're writing your books as well, make sure that they're also available as an e-download, Kindle, whatever way you want to do it. But don't pass by passive income money. So whether it's a physical book or a digital book, we never pass through money, right? So you always want to make sure it's available online as well because we want to get all the coins, okay? The second book I wrote is my number one business bestseller, Boss Builder. I think like every person I know has this book. This book is like, this is it. Now I'm going to tell you how this book was created. So when I launch my uh my genesisdorsey.com brand i didn't really have like a tribe i didn't really have a tribe um and i really didn't have a name for my tribe and i teach you guys how you know when you have your email list you want to name them you want to you know treat them as your online community and um 
when you are building a movement where you know you're going to be monetizing that movement with content and products you have to have a one-on-one -on -one product i teach you guys this all the time right you have to have a one-on-one -on -one product if you're building a personal brand a business brand and you want to sell a book a workbook you got to have like a core product that is affordable and anyone can buy and it gives people a taste of your expertise so i didn't have that yet i had a tribe but I did not have a one-on-one -on -one product. So what happened was, this was back in, what year was this? Um, wow, does this not even have the, wow, what year is this? This is the copyright, I don't know about the copyright. 2017, so this is 2016. The next year came out with Boss Builder. And in 2016, I did a large webinar, it was free. And I had over, I think it was like one, thousand some people sign up for this free webinar and it was called boss builder build your tribe in 30 days it was a, it was a one day webinar and i had all these people and i asked them um to tell me all of the different issues and um problems they were having in their business right and so they like when it came to building their tribes so they gave me all these topics i took 30 of the topics and made this talk about listen it was easy peasy now the thing about this book is that it's written i'm um, just to show you guys what the inside is like it's written like a workbook where it has content and then i give you homework right i have like an assignment after each section okay so this is all about building your tribe building your community that's what boss builders for and i also included a section in the back that's for churches and ministries right so i was like okay i need a, a, a one resource where people who are in business and people who are in ministry everybody can get fed from the same thing and this is like the one-on-one -on -one thing and that's where boss builder came from this was my first book that was a larger book so this is faith in glass slippers and this is boss builder you can see the size and so this was a eight and a eight, eight and a half by eleven i think eight and a half by eleven i want to say um and with this one this was the first one i had to really like lay out kind of you know like really make it what i wanted to and um, the tips that I would give with creating this workbook was that this was actually probably the easiest book I ever wrote because with this workbook, I did it to where each day was a question. And so it made it really easy to finish this. I finished this. I think it took me a week to write this. It took me a week to write this. So what I did was that, unless you guys can, oh, let me put the camera up there. Oh, where's the camera? There we go. So each, am I doing this right? Okay, there we go. So each number, okay, is a question. Okay, if you can see that. Each one is a question. There we go. Okay. So I split it into like 10 days, 10 days, and this ministry side had 10 days. And so it was like business, 10 questions, scale and sale, 10 questions, ministry and church systems, 10 questions, right? And so I just took 10 questions for each section and then I answered them. And the, when I when I was like writing this, I basically treated my writing like I was being interviewed. So if someone was like, "What what is a community when it comes to my business? And I was like, okay, let me answer the question. How do I establish my voice? What is branding and how does it relate to building my tribe and community? How do I tell my story and yet be transparent at the same time? How do I set up and grow my email list? How do I build confidence in my voice? What kind of content can I create for my tribe? How do I create a content calendar? How do I create a funnel for my business? How do I grow my tribe when it comes to being in an MLM business? How do I effectively price what I do? How do I create product as a service-based business, right? So like, as you, I just answer the question. So that for me, that was actually an easy way to finish this because I treated it like I was being interviewed and I was like, okay, here's my responses. And then, you know, some responses were like a page, two pages, some were three or four, but it helped me to crank out this content to create my number one business product. And so now when I speak, this is the bad, this is like the number one bestseller because now when I'm speaking on business or ministry, I can bring this one right with me and you know sell them out um and it, and it is also available as a ebook so from pain to purpose asks is it okay to post the cover of your book or prayer book on your social media platform as you're building your tribe yes um you know 
when I told my tribe, so when I did the webinar that was free, I used that as the upsell for this. I used basically this as the upsell, excuse me. So like you can let people know what's coming. You can let people know like you have a product that's coming. And a lot of times when we talk about like pre-orders or things like that, you want to let people know that like you're working on something because you want them to be ready to, to, to give you their coin so they can get this help, right? Um, and so with this one, I really learned the art of like, maximizing my writing skills by like breaking down this workbook into question format. The other thing is that workbooks are work. So you want to give them work. And so what I did was to keep it simple, I had where like some pages have like three questions. Let me get this camera right. Three questions. Some of them have one, but there it's actually a working book for them. So they're, you know, they're getting their, their money's worth. Um, the second thing I learned with this is pricing. So people told me, they're like, well, why isn't it like only, it should only be like 20 bucks. I'm like, no, it shouldn't be. It should not be 20 bucks. Um, what I learned is that when you are in your brand, you can price your content, whatever you want to price it at. Um, you know, it's funny because, especially when it comes to workbooks for me, because my workbooks are basically, it's teaching in a book, in a book format. And so I price mine, I think mine are 30, let me look at my price points because I can tell you guys what they are. I should know them by heart, but I have too much content and products to tell you. So this one is, um, the physical copy is $29.97. The e-version is $24.99, right? Um, I price my books the way I want to price them. I'm not going to say, oh, you know, they should only be like 20 bucks or 15 bucks. No, for me, it's about the con the value of the content that is inside. And I'm really big on me standing by my value. I had to learn that a lot. It took me forever to finally learn that it was okay to stand on a price and not shirk from it. The thing about it is that you have to have people when you're building your tribe that value your content. So I had to train my tribe. I talked about, talk about this in an email to my tribe. And I talked to them about how you have to train people to invest in the knowledge, right? And so sometimes we're growing communities that don't really value because they're so addicted to free stuff. And that's why you want to teach them on how, okay, bam, you want to learn, here's a core product. It has a low level investment. So it only you know, it's under, you know, 40 bucks to invest, but you do have to train people to understand that you are not this like free, you know, we're like free, 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 right? It's, it's very similar to print school, right? So even though I'm doing free content and videos, you know, when it comes to like, for instance, the Canva design, the Canva planner and journal bootcamp or the my $500 planner and journal business ebook, or, you know, these um, upcoming boot camps and trainings, they are not free. And they're not going to be very cheap. Some of them are not, they're not cheap at all. You know, the prayer journal boot camp, I think is three ninety seven. dollars And so, you know, I had one woman say, oh, you know, that's like, too expensive. But here's the thing, you have to stand by your value, right? Now, of course, it's, it's not affordable for everyone, but you do have to know, okay, what am I providing? What's the worth of the content? And then two, in the non, in the nonfiction arena, you have to understand what you're doing for people, right? So a perfect example is, you know, if I'm going to teach you how to build your planner and journal business, right? I'm actually teaching you how to build a revenue-based business, right? And so, for instance, the the new boot camp coming out, we did the prayer journal boot camp, but we're about to do the um, the the planner and journal generic non-faith based boot camp, right? And the, the entry price is going to be three ninety seven, just like the prayer journal. So you have to understand that if I'm going to teach you how to build a business and all I ask is $397, that is a drop in the bucket if I'm going to teach you how to build a six-figure business, right? So you have to stand, like you have to like learn that a lot of times we really undervalue our knowledge. And a lot of people who are speakers, experts, consultants, you know, you're writing books and, you know, in workbooks and all this kind of stuff, you have to understand the value of your knowledge and the value of your voice. I'm not telling you to sell books for $5,000, but I'm definitely not telling you to, to undercut yourself because you have to know that you are an expert and you have to stand by your value, okay? Um, and you don't need to shirk from those prices. So this is why I tell people, you know, when, you're, when we're packaging up our knowledge, you're packaging up your genius, okay? So Boss Builder, it taught me how to stand by the pricing. It taught me on how to lay out a workbook better and, you know, knock out the content. The other thing I learned was I took the content was based off of what people submitted. So, you know, you can do surveys, you can do, you know, questionnaires where you ask people, what do they want to learn? You know, and you use that as a model to build out products, right? That you can sell based on your knowledge. The next book I wrote make sure this okay these both came out in the same year 
but this one came out this one came out next so this is led to lead this is probably is my favorite cover design definitely my favorite cover design that I've ever designed for myself. Um, I do, I did design all of my books. <laughs> I laid out all of my books. I am, my background is a graphic designer. So, and a web designer. So, you know, I don't play with how my stuff looks. Okay. It needs to all look good. Okay. Um, so again, Faith and Glass Slippers was for women. It has like a marble uh, cover effect. Um, Lead Lead is also the women's book. And this one is a very powerful red. It has um, illustrations of women. This is me right here. I had this one custom done. And this is the back. It's me. Um, and so Lead to Lead is a faith-based leadership book for women. Okay. And I needed a leadership book because I was looking at who was booking me. And I have a lot of female um, entrepreneurs and bosses who book me for like conferences and events. And so when I was speaking to a Christian female audience, I wanted to have books. Now I have faith in glass slippers, but I wanted a leadership book because a lot of times I was getting booked to speak on leadership. And so where was the book on leadership for women? I had to write it. OK, so it's important to know that you do need to have a diversify when it comes to being, you know, a nonfiction um, or a speaker consultant, have a diversified, <coughs> excuse me, arena books. You want to have your one on one product. But as you grow, you know, have more than one book. Right. That can help to feed subgroups of your tribe. So I did lead to lead. Led to lead. Oh, let's go over pages. Oh my god. So boss builder. Let's go back to boss builder. Boss builder is. I don't think that boss builder has page numbers. I did not. I don't do page numbers on this book. But I gotta look up how many pages this one was. I think it's like 192. I can tell you guys real quick. Let me go to Amazon. So I can tell you guys. Do you, oh, let me give you guys the unit cost on the books. Let me do that instead. Hold on. So you guys know how much it costs to print them. I think I showed this before one time, but may not have. So just so you guys know, give me a second. Logging on the back end. Hold on. <clears throat> Okie dokie. So, um, Faith and Glass Slickers cost me two, I know this one by heart, cost me $2.15 to print. Okay. And it gets sold for, give you guys the price point, um, $12.99 physical and then $10.99 for the ebook. And you know what? Something I learned from another mentor, they did something that they said was so powerful. They were like, why should a book be cheaper just because it's a digital version? I thought that was so powerful because he said it's the same, it's the same content. If anything, right, the book is more expensive because it has to be printed and shipped, right? But why is the book cheaper? And I was like, that's a great, great, great reasoning because you're getting the same content. And so I'm actually thinking about making my all my books the same price, whether it be ebook or physical, because the only thing you're paying for, again, the unit cost is the fact that it has to get printed, so it's a little bit higher. But I'm just like, that's a really good point. That's a very good point. It's the same content. Why is it? Why is it cheaper if it's the same content? So um, that this one costs two fifteen to print. Boss Builder, okay. This is thicker, of course, and Boss Builder costs me just to give you guys. <clears throat> Boss Builder cost me. Oops, three fifteen. So this costs two fifteen. This costs three fifteen to print. Okay, three fifteen to print, and they are sold for Boss Builder sold for twenty nine ninety seven physical copy and twenty four ninety nine e version. Okay. And the e-versions are in, I sell mine through my Shopify store and their PDF files. Okay. Um, led to lead, which is this one. Okay. This one cost me, give me a second. Okay. 
301. This, this is a six by nine. This is 301 to print. Okay. And this one is sold for through my store, um, $24.99 physical and $22.99 ebook. Okay. Okay. So with Led to Lead, let me talk about the lessons I learned with Led to Lead. Led to Lead was the book that took me the longest to write. <laughs> this was actually supposed, it was supposed to come out a year before. It did not happen. I had so many hook hiccups. I had hired someone to design um, my book, do some marketing. It fell through. It was a horrible experience. Um, and so I just like, I'm going to handle all my stuff. So I did design the cover. Just I just took over, back over, you know. And let me tell you some lessons that I've learned in writing like my first like longer version, like an actual book book, right? So this book um was let me tell you of actual content is like 140 143 pages right it took me forever to actually write this book um and i had to hire i ended up actually joining a book writing program and there's actually a um a book writing a book coach that i'm going to be bringing on here to youtube she's amazing and i'm joining her um her name is Britt Dior. She is a book coach. And I'm actually joining her, um, the Amazing Writer Society, which is a, a membership club where it helps you to basically write your book in six months. And I cannot tell you the importance of having a coach when you're writing like a book book, like not, you know, like 39 pages, something like this right um it is important especially if you're especially if you're having a hard time forming your ideas and so it's so important i learned like the power of having an outline the power of like having your book already kind of laid out before you even write um at first i was just trying to like write the book without no or without any organization and so with this one i learned the importance of like okay number one what should be in the book, right? What does my tribe, when I think about women who are leaders who want to learn how to lead. So this book, Let It Lead, is a woman's starter manual to living and leading with joy. And I knew my title and my subtitle before I wrote the book. Sometimes it's like later, but for me, I had like organized it and like understood, okay, what am I actually writing about? What is the framework? And I had to create a framework. And it's funny because I can create frameworks for business. I write a book, I was struggling. And so I learned that, number one, what was the book that I wanted women who are Christian faith based? What was what was like, what did I want women leaders to walk away with in life when it came to living and leading with joy? And that's that after that, I kind of had my outline together. But then I also had to learn discipline. I had to learn discipline to get it done. It was it was weird. Like I could write this. Right, I can, but for some reason, <sighs> this took me forever because it was it needed some real discipline, and so you have to pace yourself too. It took me over a year to get it done, but it got done. And now when I go to speak, I have books upon books to sell, right? And so this was like a big one for me. Um, but I had to learn the art of discipline. I had to learn the art of organization, really organizing my thoughts to what I wanted and really creating a framework for my writing. And it, like I said before, if you need to get a coach, you need to get a coach. I highly recommend Britt Dior. Um, she is amazing. And I will definitely bring her onto my channel soon so you guys can learn more of like how to basically become a good writer. The next one is the S word. And I have another one coming out soon, uh, but this is the S word. And this is my sales uh, workbook. This is actually a year planner. It, is, it's, it has the sales strategies in the front. Then it has a 52 week planner for sales in the back. This is a very thick one, a very thick one. And it's thicker than um, Boss Builder, definitely thicker than Boss Builder. So you can just kind of see the two. This, the S word is much thicker. And that's because this workbook is also a planner. So it was much thicker. And so with the S word, I, this, let me tell you, give me the most powerful lesson learned about the S word was that you have to create as a not, so as for me, let me, let me back up. For me, I knew that I'm not writing books to write books. Cause that's not like a goal, like to just be an author. Like that's, that, I'm what, what? I knew that as, first of all, at first I'm a teacher. 
I'm a teacher. I'm an expert. I have knowledge that people need. And so I had to learn the power of creating the right types of products that actually would help people to have a better business, to have a better life, to be a better leader. Like those are usually that those are three categories. Either I'm going to help you in your life. I'm going to help you in your leadership. or I'm going to help you in your business. Those are the three areas. So I needed to make sure I had books that serve those points. And one of the greatest struggles that my tribe was having was selling right they were making stuff but selling it was like a whole other arena on top of that when it came to my speaker topics sales was starting to become a very hot topic that i was getting booked to speak on but where was the book on sales right so i'm speaking on it where's the book for it right so i'm speaking but where's the where where's the product there should always be product so the reason why i'm saying this is because they may be paying me to speak right that's one check but if i'm speaking to a room of 300 people how am i going to collect money from them now of course they're going to go to my website they may become coaching clients but i also should have a way to easily from that room if i have 300 people let me get at least 100 of them to buy a 30 dollar product Okay, so that is um, that is so it's like it's like kind of thinking more in a way that's like a long it's long term, right? So you're not just someone who's an expert; you're someone who needs to package your genius, right? So that so that you can monetize when you walk in the rooms. So it's not just oh, I'm a speaker. No, I'm a paid speaker, not just like where I'm getting one check. My goal is to get more than one check. My goal is to get checks plus deposits of payments that came from book sales, right? Um, and so that's where the S word came from. And so with the S word, this was 2018. This was the next book that I wrote. And this is, it has seven keys, seven keys to becoming an awesome salesperson, right? And um, this, it has, oh man. Just so you guys can see, I wonder if I can turn this down so you guys can see. It takes them through, right? It takes them through all of these sections. It has here where they'll do a section, right? They'll read this, and then there's a worksheet, right, that they have to answer, right? And then they do more content. They're learning about sales, worksheet, okay? Learning about sales, worksheet. Learning about sales channels, how to maximize your sales channels, worksheet. Um, how to have your systems in sales, right? Worksheet. How to navigate the no in sales, worksheet. How to spread the news in your sales, worksheet. Once this section is done, I then have them transition into actual personal work where they're discovering who they are, right? I have all these questions. They're discovering what their dreams are, right? So that they can, so if you think about it, sales is really about accomplishing goals. So you got to know what your goals are so that you can hit your sales goals. I talk about them discovering their, discovering their business, discovering their passion, discovering their voice. These are all questions. Then it goes into the tracker, right? So in the tracker, it has their, um, their goals for the month. It has their blank calendar for their sales goals. Then it goes into um, them writing out their goals specifically. And then here's the sales tracker that I created. So with the sales tracker, it helps you every week. There's 52 sheets of these because it's for every week of the year, right? They're undated, so it doesn't matter when you start. But it helps you track all of the different sales activities that they can do in a week. So, for instance, one is like, um, you know, referrals, you know, going to an exhibition or vending. You know, maybe you're going to a networking event. Um, you know, how many prospects did you get from the networking event? How many follow-up calls? Um, you know, how many phone calls are you doing? How many first meetings? How many face-to-face -face meetings? How many proposals are you doing? How many deals have been closed? So the way that this sales um, plan was made, it was actually made for people who needed to close deals every week. Right. So you could be in the car business. You could be in the sales business for your insurance. You could be like, give me so many different industries that can happen You, as a graphic designer. I, I have to close deals. Right. Um, you know, in my firm, in my in glam print go. So when we're doing like planners and journals and I have to, you know, get on the phone with clients, I can track to see, OK, bam, you know, this is what I'm doing. And the cool part about this tracker is that each activity has like a, a point system so you can see how many points you you know ac accumulated at the end of the week so this has that it has an e-commerce tracker i mean it's and so the way it works is that the front is the learning and then this part is the tracking and really why i did it was because i wanted people to see their work you know if this if this tracker is empty it's because you're not working 
right? You can't say you're working, you're not tracking it, right? So this became like, okay, if you really are hungry about sales, you're ready to really work in sales, this is the tracker. This is the, it teach you about sales, but it also too, it's the tracker. And so I call it the S word, okay? S is for sales. The seven keys to selling like a pro. So this is the workbook, okay? So again, I did the S word. I did boss builder. I did lead to lead and faith in glass slippers. Now, of course, I have, you know, like, you know, workbooks and online courses. But just like the pink tub is saying, there should always be product to match content. And that's what I'm trying to show you guys is that, you know, when you talk about being a nonfiction author, you're publishing books, we're not just publishing books to publish them. Our goal is where we're creating content, okay, that matches the uh, the goals of the company, right? And so as a personal brand, I'm a speaker, I'm an expert, I'm a consultant, I'm a coach, right? Um, my goal is where when people want to learn about how to do something i don't just have the trainings for it the youtube content content for it but i also have some some passive income products now passive income products are books could be online courses could be trainings you know there's ebook downloads there's a lot of different ways you can monetize your knowledge but i just wanted to do this video to get you thinking about okay bam I don't just need to be an author. I need to be a paid author. So let me produce content and books that my tribe actually wants and not just being an author, right? The second thing is that it's not about how long it is. It's about the meat of the content, right? Focus on good content. Focus on good content. The third thing is that you need to value your knowledge. You know, if you are an expert, you're a genius. You are a genius. You are someone who has knowledge that the world needs. So do not shirk from your pricing. Like, don't say, oh, I need to undervalue myself. Don't undervalue yourself. Care about your growth. Care about your expertise. Stand by your pricing. The third thing that we talked about in this video was to maximize rooms. So when you're at, you know, maybe you're speaking at a conference, a summit, a panel, you know, don't be shy to have your, to have your books. Don't be shy, you know, to have content. And the reason why I'm saying that is because you may have been booked to speak. But then the people you're speaking to are, are potential customers of your products. So this is why we write books. So that when I walk into rooms, either they're going to go online and buy courses, they're going to buy my books, but I have created money. That's, see, that's, that's, that's what this is. This is money. These are not books. <laughs> These are books and workbooks. But this is actually where I took my brain, I packaged it in a way to where now I wrote, this is important, this is passive and evergreen. You create it once, you sell it forever. Okay? So I'm taking my knowledge. Every single time someone orders Faith in Glass Slippers, I don't need to rewrite the book. It's already done. Every single time someone orders Let the Lead, I don't have to rewrite the book. It's already done. Every single time someone orders Boss Builder, I don't have to rewrite the book. It's already done. Every single time someone writes the S word, someone orders the S word, I don't have to rewrite the book. I wrote this in 2018. I wrote this in 20. What was this one? 2017, 2018, 2016, right? Is, think about this. This is written in 2016. It's still selling, right? Create it once. Good. This is why I'm encouraging you guys. When we talk about print school, we're done. But when we talk about print school, this is why I'm so passionate about print school. Because I really want to teach you guys in different forms, whether it's planners, journals, print-on-demand products, you know, um, books. I want to teach you how to maximize your gifts, monetize them, but then also to use them as a leverage tool to really expand your brand, your companies, and who you are as a person. Don't put yourself in a box. If I can encourage you to do anything in 2020, I want you to not put yourself in a box. For me, I, at first, I didn't really think, I'll be honest, I had a lot of fears because I didn't really think that people would buy my mind. You know, and so I always like discouraged myself. Just I didn't really value who I was, you know, and, and it's funny because now that I look at it, I see people who have been like, oh, just I have all your books, all your workbooks, I have everything, you know, and it's because of the fact that they value what was in my mind. So as we're like launching planner and journal businesses, you know, business, 
personal brands, whatever. I want you to value your voice. I want you to value your brain. I want you to value the works in your hands, okay? You are going to produce amazing things, whether it's this year, next year, but I want you to run hard with it. Pace yourself. Does not have to happen overnight. These all were published except two of them within different years, right? But the point was that I said to myself, okay, I can either sit on my laurels and let people pass me by and they maximize their giftings and talents, or I'm going to sit my butt down. I'm all right. I'm going to write, I'm going to type this stuff up. I'm going to write, 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 write. And because I did that, the fruit of my labor is selling. Okay. So I want to ask you and challenge you to do something. Okay. I want you this year, I want you to think about where your goals are for this year. And I want you to think about what are five ways, five, just five ways that you can maximize your talents this year. Is it that you're going to do consulting? Is it that you're going to you know, launch a brand where you teach others? Is it where you're going to launch a planner journal that encourages others or teaches people how to do something? You know, is it the fact that you're going to network and really excel in your career and do some more um, moves within your career to get a higher level of, of employment? You know, what is going to be your plan? Okay, I want you to think about that. What are the five ways I want to maximize my giftings? And answer your question, Spiritual Cosmetics, all of these were Kindle Direct publishing. All, all of my books are through Kindle Direct. I'll show you all these. Okay, and again, that is the former name of Create Space. Create Space and Kindle merged as one, and they became Kindle Direct publishing. So people say, oh, Create Space is dead. It is, but it's now Kindle Direct. So, yeah, so Spiritual Cosmetics. I did all my books through Kindle Direct. You do not have to. You can use the other ones that we talk about, such as Lulu, Ingram Spark, Durante. Um, you know, you can use those kinds of um, self-publishing platforms as well. I just use Kindle Direct because it's it, it worked for me. However, I've had clients who have, excuse me, published their books on different platforms. So you don't have to use just, you know, one. But, um yeah, you do got to pick one to publish it, though. You can't publish, you know, your book on Lulu and then on Ken Direct. You know, you can't do that. You got to pick one. But all of these were done through Great Space. Okay? And all of these are under $4 to print. Right? And that's why I did it this way. Right? So I'm not printing out the books at home and selling them, you know, by buying them at Staples. Even this one. I, I could have this one printed out. But I said, no, I want it to be a book. Have it be a book. The other reason why I published it was because um, I needed proof of my genius. Right. So books help to establish your expertise in the earth. Right. It is very good to have if you're an expert. It's always good to have at least one book that's published by you that establishes your expertise. So if you're an expert at HR management, do write a book on HR management. If you're an expert at financial wisdom, find, find, write a book on financial wisdom. Right. But books are a great way to establish your expertise in a physical format. Okay, whether it's a book or an ebook, but physical books are always great because you can sell them, you know, at conferences and events. Okay, guys. So listen, hopefully you learned something from this bonus video. Um, if you did, let me know. Of course, thumbs up this video, please, so that other people can find it. If you have not subscribed, be sure to subscribe. And if you're not a member of Print School, be sure to go to glamprintgo.com backslash school. Again, that is here, right here. I want you to go here and join the email list so that you can be a part of this amazing community that we have. We sent out an amazing email yesterday on how to pace yourself in your business. I try to give you guys amazing tips that I wish I had. Um, and, you know, my goal is to just provide you with content. And so that's going to help you. So if you're not on the email list, you need to go here. Uh, the last thing is that um, you need to go to the same link because we're having, if you want to learn how to use Canva, Canva is an online design tool. And if you would like to learn on how to use Canva to make planners or journals, that is coming up January 25th. The seats, the pre-order seats are $97. So if you've not gotten your seat, you do not want to miss the pre-order price. Okay. It's going to go from 97 to 149. And then after that, it's going to go up to 197. Then 197 is the final price point. So you definitely want to get that 97 price point. Um, and again, it's going to be on January the 25th. That's this weekend. Um, it's going to be where you get the live recording. Plus, you're going to get um, a lifetime access to it. Plus, a workbook that will teach you on how really work, work uh, excuse me, walk you through on how to design. So again, you want to go to this link specifically. Guys, it has been a pleasure. I'm your girl, Jesus Dorsey. I hope that you've enjoyed being with me here on Print School. Uh, we have a video coming up 
up next week. Again, it's going to go out um, as far as the upcoming video to our email list. Um, it will be here on YouTube. But um, if you want to learn like new upcoming videos, definitely join the email list. Last but not least, last but not least, last but not least. Um, if you're watching here through YouTube, check out our community tab. Um, so the community tab is where I post daily updates. Sometimes I post two updates within a day, but always check that tab. Um, so be sure, you know, maybe like once or twice um, during the week, stop by the YouTube channel and then hit the community tab just to make sure you're not missing out on announcements. That's where I drop, you know, the newest links. I talk about upcoming classes. Right now, we have a link that's on the community tab where I'm asking you guys to submit to me what you want to learn this year. And, you know, people are coming in, but listen, I need your help because if you want to learn something this year, you need to tell, I need to know what you want to learn. And it's for free. I just, I just want to know what you want to learn. We are creating a free school this year where we're going to use the YouTube channel to push out weekly content based upon what you want to learn. We're also going to be providing with you um, monthly topics that have monthly homework assignments. So you literally are going to be in print school, right? So imagine you getting a downloadable once a month at the top of every month where we pick a subject for the whole month and then your YouTube videos that go out once a week are based upon that subject. So let's say, for instance, you want to learn about marketing for planners and journals, right? Which is a topic people have voted for. One month may be marketing for printed products, right? right? So you're going to get um, a typed up syllabus for that month. You're going to get some downloadable homework that'll help you walk you through that. And then you'll have your YouTube vid videos that we're going to tell you ahead of time what, what you know, what each uh, video topic is, the length, the time we're going live. And so it's just like you're in school. So we're really excited. But in order to produce that, we got to know what you want to learn. So I need you guys to go to the YouTube channel here. I need you to go to the community tab and there is a Google form link that we dropped. Please go fill that out so that we can create this syllabus. The syllabus will be launching again on February the 1st. So we don't have that much time. I need you guys to rush to that community tab, okay? Go fill out the Google form because on February the 1st, we're getting started, okay? So I'm going to be picking all the topics from February 2020 to December 2020, okay? I'm going to lay the whole thing out, so I don't want you guys to miss it. Again, thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure, and I will see you guys soon. Join us again um, next Monday for our next video. Stay tuned, guys. Bye.